Today we will talk about the differences between aluminum and steel blocks, the pros and cons. Now uh, I've done several of these things, different combinations. I'll highlight some of the things we ought not to do. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, the strength differences between uh, cast iron blocks and aluminum blocks. Definitely cast iron blocks are a lot tougher, no doubt about it. But that's not giving uh, doubt to the aluminum blocks available out there by several aftermarkets. And most of them are pretty stout, especially with uh, billet main caps and all that. Uh, and you know, uh, they stagger the, uh, <clears throat> the outer bolts. So that's not really straight down that can pull off and they put a little uh, tilt to the outer bolts and that keeps it anchored pretty much uh, the best it can be. Now, this said, there is one particular block out there out of the FE series that is horrible. Okay? It's got several major, major um, defects. So, uh, I suggest that uh, talk to FE uh, aficionados out there which block that they should build and avoid uh, one particular block sold out there and nothing but problems, okay? Now let's go with the typical Ford, Chevy <coughs> import blocks. Now, uh, if you look at the power dividend between an aluminum and uh, uh, cast iron block, an aluminum block will be a little bit uh, down on power due to the fact that the thermal efficiency of the casting, the, the ability to contain heat, and heat is indeed power. You cannot make power without heat. Now, if, if the engine runs too cold and expe ex expels all that heat, um, what's going to happen to the situation is your power is going to be down. So, correspondingly, if everything else being equal, you have a cast iron block, cast iron head, cast aluminum uh, block and uh, aluminum head. More likely, within reasonable uh, uh, expectations, the cast iron block, especially on the street, will make good torque, better power, because of the thermal efficiency. Now, when you get up to the upper ranges on the high compression uh, situation, yes, because compression creates more heat and sometimes the aluminum head does have a tendency to expel that heat. Uh, and uh, if the design is bad, and I've seen this in some import cars, that when you design an aluminum cylinder head and it's too cold, that's when you have a lot of sludge buildup. A lot of import cars have this issue. When you take out the valve cover, you see the sludge buildup. The engine is running too cold on the top end. Okay? So uh, you won't have that situation with a cast iron head especially if you run it at temperature sometimes. Uh, uh, even at uh, ideal temperature, if the cylinder head design is very, uh, well, should I say, the uh, heat is not uh, dispersed or you got cold uh, spots around the cylinder casting, you will get the sludge buildup, all right? So uh, that could be a definite, definite problem, and that's a that's an issue that need to be resolved and, and looked into. Now, there are some cast aluminum heads out there that are also soft. And I remember back in the day when we started using the uh, J302 head, we called that sawdust castings, <laughs> okay? Because it was so soft. And you can feel that when you're, you're pouring it. And while you're cutting it, you're going, wow, this thing is coming apart really, really quick. So those were the old castings. You, you, and... Uh, you avoid those. They were the J302 heads. But otherwise, the offering that they have out there, especially the billet aluminum, you can't uh, say they're no good. They're very, very uh, rigid and they can take a lot of punishment. Now, with the thermal inefficiencies of aluminum, a lot of that is fixed by having thermal coatings on the combustion chamber. The pistons, so some of this heat is retained in order to make power. Okay, if, like I said, if, if the the cylinder head is very, very inefficiently designed or it's got defects in, the, in how it takes off heat from the combustion chamber. You're going to have sludge build up right, right up just about everywhere, okay? And uh, now, aluminum 
will permit you to have higher compression allowable. If let's say you're 12 and a half to one cast iron, you're already on the verge of detonating. If you switch to aluminum, that's like a full point uh, reduction. Okay, so consequently, if you're on, you already switch from aluminum to cast iron, you can increase the compression ratio right off the bat, a point to point and a half. All right, and all, um, how should I say, uh, service bulletins and uh, uh, service advice, advice from GM is that the cast iron big block Chevrolet uh, versus the, the aluminum big block Chevrolet has a difference of 8 to 10 percent. That's significant, especially if you're running in a class where there's a minimum uh, weight. Everybody has to come at, you know, let's say 3,000 pounds. You really don't have an advantage with, with aluminum blocks, especially today with us in, on this uh, limited street and all these other heads up classes that uh, PSCA, NMCA, you know, uh, uh, Mustang Racing Association, all these uh, supercar street nationals. We actually add weight to the front of the car. Five to 10 pounds makes a big difference because when you're looking at the axle, and the radiator, and that's where uh, right about the radiator area or the front bumper, we had 10 pounds of weight, 10 feet away. That's 100 pounds from where that axle sees because you're looking at a leverage, okay? You can carry 10 pounds here, but if you throw it 10 feet away, that's a lever arm, a moment arm. So, uh, having an aluminum block, consequently, with the reduction in power, doesn't really uh, give us an advantage that uh, we need to look at. And then again, you look at another uh, situation. I have seen guys go from cast iron and then they go to aluminum block and then they go, man, I lost a lot of power. Well, uh, there are things you need to pay attention to. One thing, when you have a cast iron block, the block growth with the steel rods that you're running stays pretty much the same. So when you set your quench, let's say at, at 50 thousandths or 45 thousandths, the growth of the block and the growth of the steel rod will uh, remain consistent. Now, if you have an aluminum rod, you bring that down. 10,000 is the norm, okay? I've done less. So anyway, uh, when the block grow, the, uh, the rod actually, because of heat, extends. And when it extends up, uh, your, your, your piston have a tendency of hitting the head. But here's the situation you got to be mindful. If you have an aluminum block and you have a steel rod, what happens to that equation? I see this a lot. When guys switch the aluminum block, they go, I lost a lot of power, Ben. Well, did you correct your, your quench clearance and all that? No, okay, don't you realize that when that block grows and your steel rod uh, stays pretty much within three or four thousandths from, from uh, ambient uh, temperature, suddenly the block grows and the piston and rod stayed where it's at. Now your deck clearance <laughs> becomes too much. And like uh, on that one particular video I said, once you lose that, that uh, quench, all right, and the, with the, uh, the wrong piston design, you've lost the combustion chamber. You gotta keep those two intertwined and working, all right? Without those two uh, uh, dynamics, you will lose power. So now when the, the the block grows and the piston stays where it's at and you're already on the outer edge of ideal and now it grew some more now you really lost the combustion chamber and you lost compression okay in fact I had years ago that I did an aluminum block for uh, one Chevy guy and I told him be wary okay because they run like, like a flat top class and you can't put any dome or anything like that and I have the quench very very tight cold the reason for that is you got a steel rod and aluminum block and I was trying to uh, get it as close as possible to make it work to his advantage and I told him once you warm up under 160 180 don't be revving the engine okay because more likely that piston will shadow that combustion chamber perhaps hit it and he was successful with that and then another friend of his uh, followed the same basic combination and did their own thing and oh my god the doggone piston the top ring line got got hammered 
you know, and it, it hit the piston because he started revving. He wasn't warned by this uh, old customer of mine that uh, not be uh, uh, revving it up when it's cold with that steel rod and aluminum block it didn't expand yet and the piston hammered the top of the head or the top of the piston got hammered by the head and then the ring stopped rotating and that's supposed to be free and when they stop rotating uh, failure is uh, next uh, in line now also mind this situation that uh, we're talking about thermal efficiency and uh, Oh, I see that uh, guys switch over to an aluminum block and their old uh, steel combination with very high compression was still feeding through the top, you know, instead of the traditional small by Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, whatever, or even imports, the water is taken in from the bottom of the block up to the top and then out to the radiator hose on top. Some would do a reverse cooling where they bring in uh, the coolant through the head and then down to the block exiting out. Well, that sounds pretty good, but if the compression isn't high enough and you're on street level compression, when you do this, you're introducing uh, warmer, I shouldn't say cold, but warmer uh, coolant into the top of the head and the aluminum being inefficient in, in thermal uh, um, um, containing the heat uh, expels it. Now the head is too cold and the block is hot. So really it's a net loss. Something like that is you reverse back, perhaps take it to the bottom, to the top to get some heat on a straight level. On high compression, very 14, 15, 16 to one, or perhaps higher on the big block. Sure, you can bring it to the top there, but uh, restrict it in some way, okay? So uh, uh, you don't have too much of a heat loss and, and lose your combustion properties. Now, uh, on aluminum, beware you have the similar metal when it's with uh, bolted up with a cast iron uh, head or vice versa. Okay, um, you have um, electrolysis which will eat the aluminum and gel it with a cast iron and then now you want there, right? And there are coatings out there that you can put on the on the washers or the the head bolts before you know you have the steel head bolts before it screws into the uh, um, aluminum block. And what I use is uh, I use anti seize on some of these things because we take apart these engines consistently. I use anti seize on the head bolts if it's not coated, and I just put it in there. Okay, and I don't wedge it all the way down. I keep it loose and I and uh, to move a little bit and, and give it its, its position to tighten up. All right, you don't wedge it, torque it down 15, 20, and <laughs> uh, leave, leave it a little bit snug so you can slide the head in there then uh, the rest will take care of itself. Some make sure uh, that you use a uh, aluminum compatible uh, coolant for the street or some of the race. Well, some of the guys don't like it because when you have a, an engine failure and you don't have any uh, uh, blanket on the oil pan, boy, that, that coolant's hard to take off from the race, racetrack surface and they're gonna be mad at you. <laughs> okay, so anyway, and also I run straight water, but as soon as we're done racing, I drain it. Okay, I drain the block completely. So I have the lowest point on the block uh, drain plug and I, I let it out. Same thing with the fuel. All right, I don't keep the float, float ball full, uh, towing it back to LA, let's say we're from out of state. Oh boy, uh, that thing's gonna slowly uh, drop into the, with all that shaking and things going on while you're towing, uh, the float ball's full, uh, fuel will go to the cylinder. Now if you get some kind of a caustic kind of fuel, Q16 or methanol, oh yeah, that, that'll eat up the aluminum. Uh, or worse, it'll eat the cylinder even if it's a steel liner. Now, on this blocks, definitely uh, on aluminum blocks, like the imports, you gotta put those deck uh, spacers because some of these blocks are freestanding, all right? And the only one that holds it in place is the head gasket and, and uh, the heads. Now, when you fasten them with, with uh, uh, head bolts, okay, you got a good chance, but you're still gonna have this movement, 
okay especially some of these import guys love going with stroker cranks oh my gosh there's not enough crankcase there but they still try to put the biggest crankcase so when you put this deck plates it, it's a spacer that holds into the cavity the open part of the deck and it's a spacer that you, you press in there and holds the cylinder in place that is a, a must do and and uh, always always I suggest doing that all right now the coolant open deck that's what an open deck support now what else do I uh, tend to maybe forget what is aluminum blocks um, there are very many good quality blocks out there like I said just that one FE that I am uh, very very worried that had given us problems all right uh, avoid that but most of them uh, um, are very good I just I was, all I would say is that when you switch from cast iron to aluminum watch your your squish your quench clearance because this can change due to the fact that like I said the growth of the block and then you have a steel rod if you have an aluminum head I mean aluminum block and aluminum uh, connecting rod yeah you get, you get the growth the growth uh, rate is pretty much the same so you can pretty much uh, get that uh, uh, close but if you got s steel rods aluminum block oh man and some of these LS and uh, if you look at the LS aluminum block they're light now uh, I, I dare you to pick up an LS cast iron block see how you like it okay and pick up a big block 396 or, 4, or 454 beside it cast iron you'll be surprised at that weight it is sturdy but it comes with its penalty all right so anyway cast iron versus aluminum thermal efficiency versus strength okay if the engine could not contain the heat effectively then your power potential will be down now when you I look at all, all these edges sure you have the uh, the aluminum block still got steel liners okay think about that it's got a steel liner so somehow it's able to to retain some of that heat but after the steel liners the block itself the aluminum expels it all right and then when it gets to the head oh uh, okay so uh, the numbers like GM coded before eight to ten percent uh, loss between cast iron to aluminum it might be a little bit uh, less now with uh, denser aluminum uh, um, moldings out there and they're they're able you know, a little thicker everywhere and they don't transfer the heat uh, as quickly as the old castings the, the thinner castings of aluminum blocks from the factory back then so take that into consideration watch out for that but anyway uh, let me know what you think of these videos and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, I hope uh, we can keep this uh, going and uh, we'll keep coming back with more uh, technical subjects. Okay, thank you very much guys. Bye-bye.